So we just got our hands on Samsung's Galaxy S9 Plus, the latest rival to Apple's iPhone X. We thought we'd kick things off by comparing performance specs and some benchmarks. Last year, we compared the iPhone X's performance to the Note 8 and found the 10 to be the clear winner. Let's quickly look over the specs before we take a look at the benchmarks. You can skip to this section of the video if you already know the specs. Both the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus models feature the same 8-core processor, with 4 high-performance cores and 4 efficiency cores. The Note 8 from last year had the same CPU layout, except now the high-performance cores are clocked higher, and the efficiency cores are clocked a little bit slower. Both S9 models get an identical graphics chip as well, which Qualcomm says is 30% faster, 30% more efficient, and has 2.5 times the display throughput than the graphics chip in the Note 8. The main difference is that the S9 Plus gets 6GB of RAM compared to only 4GB on the regular S9 model. Interestingly, customers in the US and China get slightly different versions of both the processor and graphics chip compared to customers in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. On the other hand, the iPhone X has a 6-core processor with 2 high-performance cores and 4 efficiency cores. For graphics, the iPhone X uses an Apple-designed 3-core GPU, which boasts 30% faster performance over the GPU used in the iPhone 7 models. The main drawback is that the iPhone X only has 3GB of RAM, only half as much as what the S9 Plus gets. Apple's operating system is very efficient, but the Samsung definitely has the upper hand, especially if you like using a lot of apps. Now let's see how the S9 Plus stacks up against the iPhone X. Starting off with Geekbench 4, the iPhone X completely destroys the S9 Plus, especially in single-core performance, which makes sense since it has two high-performance cores instead of four on the Samsung. Even though the high-performance cores in the S9 Plus have a faster clock speed than the ones in the Note 8, the single-core performance didn't improve at all. Multi-core performance did improve, but not nearly enough to compete with the iPhone X. For the graphics test, the S9 Plus scored really close to the 10, and it greatly improved over the Note 8. A score like this is really big news on the Samsung side. Moving on to the Antutu benchmark, the S9 Plus actually beats out the 10 by a good margin, saying it defeated 99% of users. That's probably due to the massive improvement to the graphics chip. Antutu's HTML5 test crowned the iPhone 10 as the winner, but not by that much. In Basemark OS 2, the S9 Plus came out just slightly ahead, but if you take a look at the detailed test results, you'll see that the iPhone X won in every category except memory, which makes sense since the S9 Plus has double the RAM. In GFX Bench OpenGL's 1080p Manhattan off-screen test, the iPhone X is slightly ahead. However, the iPhone X completely destroys the S9 Plus in the Jetstream browser benchmark, but that's really a comparison between each operating system's default browser. The iPhone X results won't change using an alternate browser since Apple requires WebKit's use, but it is possible that the Galaxy S9 might. In Octane 2.0, another browser benchmark, the iPhone X yet again floors the S9 Plus, so we can see just how good Safari is compared to Samsung's browser. So if you're going to choose the Samsung, we would recommend downloading either Chrome or Firefox web browsers. Since the S9 Plus boasts improved Wi-Fi connectivity, we decided to test the speed using the Speedtest app. There was basically no difference at all since we are running off of slow business Wi-Fi in a city that doesn't support fiber internet. But other reviewers in big cities that do support it have seen incredible Wi-Fi download speeds on the S9 Plus. Looking at all these benchmarks, it seems that Samsung has mostly caught up to the performance of Apple's flagship iPhone X with their S9 Plus, with some notable exceptions. Performance on both devices has gotten to a point where it should no longer affect your decision-making process when choosing between the two. All the extra performance is now used for extra features like 4K 60 frame per second video recording, augmented reality processing, and authentication, like Face ID and Intelligent Scan. We'll be comparing the two facial authentication systems soon, so be sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss it. We've already compared Face ID to Samsung's iris scanning and face recognition, so click the card above to check it out. So if you're trying to figure out which phone you should buy, you should really base it on the features and operating system you like the most. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.